Humans have long shared the earth with beasts, and even in urban settings, we come into contact with wildlife every day. And by wildlife, I mean raccoons and recently coyotes. Here to talk to us about the recent rise in sightings and how to coexist is Chris Anderson with the Washington Department of Fish and Game. Hey, Chris, thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for having me in the department. Absolutely. So are we seeing an increase right now in urban wildlife? And if so, why? Uh, no, not in my opinion. Um, you know, we we have we have more people mm -hmm. that have packed in the area. We have more people move move here. We have we have a third of the state in King County, 2.3 million people. Uh, that's not the same as 10 years ago. That's not the same as 15 or 20 years ago. I've been doing this for 15 years. Um, we see the same reports and complaints that have came in, you know, back then as we do now. Same dynamic, same times of year, um, same everything. Uh, just a lot of folks that haven't perhaps seen it before, yeah. both due to being new to the area, but also just uh, COVID and lockdown as well. And and security cameras, things like that. People are noticing things, they have more options. Very interesting. So it's not a rise in wildlife, it's a rise in people and technology, which is interesting. Um, and things that people haven't seen before. Now, I'm from an area where we have a lot of coyotes. And I think <laughs> that we're starting to see some coyotes recently spotted in the neighborhood of Magnolia. Now, they're saying okay. it's one coyote, but don't coyotes roam in packs? We're, we're showing some video of the various pictures people have caught. Sure, great. Um, yeah, no, uh, well, coyotes, they, uh, they keep family groups if, they're, if there's a pair, and that pair breeds, and then they usually have uh, some young of the year from the, uh, they have year, yearlings from the last year sometimes helping out, and then the female's having her pups. So usually when you see a group, it's usually the pups with the female. Uh, they normally hunt solo or maybe in a pair, okay. uh, as opposed to like wolves. When we think of wild dogs, they're, the wolves are the ones that go out in packs. So, so what do, oh, normally coyotes are by themselves. I'm sorry, I, so they're by themselves. What do we do though if one, somebody mentioned is following them with their dog? I mean, what can you do? Well, the biggest thing is, uh, you know, just to know that coyotes are all around us. I mean, you'd mentioned that, uh, you know, you're in a coyote area. That's everywhere. Okay. <laughs> so from the Panama Canal up to Alaska, East Coast, West Coast, they're everywhere, up to the mountains, down to the, to the ocean. Uh, so, you know, uh, if you have a small dog, uh, pick it up. Uh, you know, coyotes look at smaller animals as uh, potential prey. If you have a larger dog, like a lab, or most recently I talked to someone with a Weimaraner, the coyote was approaching them. And, uh, you know, in that case, the coyote was um, most likely uh, being territorial. You have another uh, animal, another canid uh, dog relative that is about the same size, and they can sometimes be threatened by that, particularly if you're near a den. Yeah, I can imagine. All right, let's talk about raccoons who also live in dens. Sure. Recently saw another post where uh, a neighbor had asked another neighbor to stop feeding the raccoons. Now, there's this YouTube star who has been showing how he feeds the raccoons, just a lot of raccoons. It's almost disturbing to look at, although I know a lot of people think that this is okay. Let's talk about that. Yeah, um, obviously I'm gonna say no, it's not okay. Um, that's really dangerous, and it's dangerous for the raccoons and for the humans. Um, you know, with raccoons, when they get concentrated like that, they don't normally <laughs> go around in droves like that. Um, you know, just like with all of us, there's more people in the kindergarten, more kids, and so they can pass things. And one thing that we have in urban, uh, urban raccoons is uh, uh, canine distemper. And we Ooh. see that run through their urban populations throughout their range here in North America. Um, so that's not good for them. And then also habituating like that, they're still a wild am animal and they're unpredictable. And raccoons can do some heavy damage to both you or your dog or children, they also become unpredictable and they associate us with food. So if a little kid's walking around with, let's say a hot dog and a raccoon comes up to it and gets aggressive or unpredictable or scared, that can end in a really bad situation. Um, and I've seen it, unfortunately, with dogs, not with children, but with dogs um, and cats where people have fed them next to their cats. Oh, so yeah. not a good idea. Um, and situations like that have caused um, small uh, epidemics in our uh, local um, raccoon population with canine distemper in the past. And that'll continue to happen as long as they have those opportunities to concentrate. Oh, well, I wish I could continue to ask you more about it, but I know it's important to secure trash cans, not feed them and, and keep them away from your house if you can. 
Um, thank you so much, Chris, for that very technical explanation of all these things that we now know as urban wildlife. We appreciate it. Sure, it, it, it applies to all urban wildlife. I mean, raccoons, coyotes, you name it. Um, you know, it's all the same thing as keeping our attractants put away and uh, not giving them the opportunity to develop that habituation, letting them do their thing. They've yeah. got enough and they'll be fine. They'll so. be fine. Don't tempt them. Thanks, Chris.